Okay, practice exam 25, exam one, problem 25. Why is saturated steam used as HFG instead of HG when in problem 26, HG was used for the saturated steam? So slightly different problems here. I think 25 was probably the more interesting one, um, steam boiler. And in this problem, we're told that the steam coming in is 40 PSIA saturated. So that's a fully defined state. We can find the enthalpy of that steam. We could find HG or HFG. But what's interesting about this problem is we don't know the leaving condition of the steam. It's not given. So we're sort of stuck. We really can't move forward in this problem because what we need is M dot delta H. And the problem is inviting you to assume that the entire latent heat of vaporization of the steam is given up as it heats this water. Not obvious, but also not crazy. I've seen problems like this. You could get a problem like this. So you should know that if you have no other way to move forward, but you know that the incoming steam is of a certain um, condition at a certain pressure and it's saturated, then it's, uh, it's going to give up all of its latent heat of vaporization. So you could do, could do two things. You could do HG minus HF from the steam table at whatever pressure it is. Or you could just recognize that that difference is HFG, the latent heat of vaporization. And you're assuming that the entirety of that latent heat of vaporization is going to be given up by the steam as it heats the water. So on one side of the equation, you have this Q dot delta H, uh, Q dot equals M dot delta H, which is HFG, which is HG minus HF, right? These are all the same thing. And then the other side, it's just how much heat does that add to the water? And we use a rule of thumb there, 500 GPM delta T. Okay, so why isn't that the case in the other problem that you mentioned? The other problem is a steam heating coil. And on this one, we have a mass flow rate and a pressure. And we know the rate at which energy is being supplied. So because we know Q dot, in this problem, in the first problem, we didn't know Q dot. In the second problem, we did. So we, we won't assume that the leaving enthalpy is going to be saturated liquid necessarily. In the first problem, we had no way to move forward. We needed some assumption, so we made one. In the second problem, we have enough information that we don't have to make an assumption. We can actually quantify H2 because it's not known. H1 is known, the entering condition is fully defined, pressure and saturated. Mass flow rate is given and the capacity of the steam coil is given so we can find H2. And then the question is to find out the enthalpy once you know both, both um, you know the pressure and you know the leaving enthalpy, you can find the quality. Good question. And I, I, you know, I think 25 is a little bit of a leap, but now you've seen it. So uh, I like that you were cautious about making an assumption and didn't just jump straight to this in, in number 26, because you wouldn't want to. Um, you don't want to make any assumptions if you don't have to, but if you're in a position where that's your best option, then you'll make the assumption.